A cubic unit cell is a repeating pattern of atoms or ions in a crystalline solid. There are several different types of cubic unit cells. In this video, I'm going to be talking exclusively about the simple cubic cell, which is also known as SCC. This, what I've drawn here, is a representation of the simple cubic cell. My first goal is to help you understand what this actually represents. We're also going to be talking about the coordination number for a simple cubic cell. I'll define what that means. We'll be talking about how many atoms there are or ions there are in each unit cell. And we'll also be talking about the side length of the unit cell and how we can relate that to the radius of an atom. But again, our first job is just simply to understand what this type of diagram represents. The simple cubic cell is an arrangement of atoms or ions, I'm just gonna say atoms, that sit side by side, kind of in a pattern like this. So I'm just gonna be drawing a few different atoms and they are literally sitting in the exact way that I'm drawing them. I'm attempting to draw them all the same size. It's not quite working out that way, but imagine that these atoms are all the exact same size and they are touching each other in the way that I'm representing here. So they're not kind of sitting in the, in the corners like this. They're not sitting like that. They are lined up exactly in this particular way, just like this. They are also stacked on top of each other in multiple layers. So what I'm going to do is copy this and make a second layer of these at nine atoms. So this is gonna be our layer number two. I'm gonna turn it into a different color so that we can distinguish the two layers from each other. So we have one layer of atoms, and then we have this second layer of atoms, and the second layer of atoms sits directly on top of the first layer, exactly like this. They're right on top of each other. They're not offset a little bit. They're just stacked one right on top of the other. Let's go along and draw some nuclei into each of these atoms. That's gonna be important for later on. So I'm just gonna add the nucleus of each one of these atoms. Now, before we get into understanding exactly what this cube represents, this is a really good time to talk about coordination number and identify the coordination number for the simple cubic cell. The coordination number is the number of atoms that are in direct contact with any one of the atoms in a crystal structure or in a unit cell. So we can use these two layers, kind of the way that I'm doing it right here, to help us really visualize the coordination number in a, in a cubic, a simple cubic cell. Let me um, take, I'm gonna take the atom in the center right here and I'm gonna turn it green. And what we're going to do is identify the coordination number for this green atom. Remember the coordination number is the number of atoms that are in direct contact with this green atom right here that are directly touching it. So we can see just in this layer alone, we can see that this green atom is in contact with one, two, three, four. Again, we're looking for this direct contact, not a gap, direct contact between the atoms. And I didn't do a great job. There's a little bit of a gap right here, but it shouldn't be there. That's just my bad drawing. So this green atom is in contact with one, two, three, four atoms that are in its same layer. When we come along with a second layer of atoms and stack it on top, just like this, that green atom is going to be in contact with the atom that is in the center of this purple row. So when I take this, this layer and I set it right on top, that central atom in the purple layer is gonna to be touching the green atom as well. So now we have one, two, three, four, five atoms that are in contact with this green one. Imagine that there was a third layer, a third layer that was underneath this layer right here. If you can imagine what that might look like, there will be another atom sitting directly underneath this guy right here. So this green atom right here is in direct contact with one atom underneath it, one atom on top of it, and four atoms that are in the same row. That means the coordination number for the simple cubic cell is six. Again, that means that any atom or ion is in contact, direct contact, with six other atoms. So that's what that part represents. Now let's try to understand the atoms per unit cell and also this representation right here. 
to help us do that, I'm gonna see if I can easily, no, I cannot, I'm gonna see if I can um, get rid of just that green highlighting. We'll make a new atom there in the middle. We'll give it a nucleus. And in order for us to understand the atoms per unit cell and also understand this diagram, what I want is to only have four atoms in each of our layers. So I'm going to erase all but four of the atoms in our layers. And I'm also going to make, make them a little bit bigger. Now to help us understand this representation, we're gonna go back to the model that shows these atoms stacked on top of each other. So we're gonna remember in the simple cubic cell, we have, not only do we have uh, layers of atoms that are side by side, but then they're also stacking on top of each other just like this. So our purple layer of atoms is stacking directly on top of the orange layer of atoms just like this. And this is how we want to think about the, the repeating pattern when we're trying to visualize the simple cubic cell. Now, we cannot imagine a three-dimensional drawing if we keep our atoms stacked directly on top of each other. The three-dimensional drawing is done at kind of an angle like this, so you can also see a little bit of what is behind. Not only do you see the front row, but you see a little bit of what is behind as well. So what we're going to do is take this top layer of atoms which is sitting directly on top of the bottom layer, but we're gonna offset a little bit, we're gonna angle it a little bit, just like we do when we're drawing a cube to help us visualize what is underneath or in the back. Keep in mind, in reality, the atoms are stacked like this, and we're just gonna view it at an angle to make it easier for us to see and visualize the atoms that are in the back. So we're gonna go with that. And now what I'm also gonna do to try to help make this a little bit easier to look at, because now it's a pretty chaotic drawing, I'm gonna color in these front atoms just to make them a little bit darker, just to try to kind of make it easier to distinguish them from the back atoms. They're still there, I'm just trying to make them a little bit darker so that they kind of overshadow the atoms in the back. The cubic unit cell, the actual cube diagram right here, is a diagram that we get if we imagine making a cube by connecting the nuclei of eight atoms, four in the top layer and four in the bottom. So here I've made that connection of nuclei in the four uh, atoms in the top layer. That corresponds to this portion of the cube drawing right here. I'm gonna connect those nuclei to the atoms that are in the back layer, the peach atoms, just like this. And so that part that I just drew, these three parts, the nuclei of those atoms in the back, they correspond to this part of the diagram as well. There is this other nucleus down here, which doesn't show up in this particular part of the drawing, but it's there. I'm gonna draw those lines a little bit thinner. We know that they're there. They're just not being shown in this particular drawing right here. When we visualize the simple cubic cell in this diagram, after we have made the cube by connecting these nuclei, we come back along and we ignore, oops, we ignore every portion of every atom that is outside of this boundary, this cube that we have identified. So all of these parts of the atoms that are sitting outside this cube, we just kind of act like they're not there, just ignore them. And we focus only on the portions of the atoms that are inside the boundary that has been identified as the cube. So let's Let's take a couple atoms and just focus on those atoms specifically. For example, let's focus on this atom right here that's in the front bottom right corner, which is this position right here. If we were trying to imagine for this purple atom what portion of that atom is being represented in this diagram, remember that we are not going to be paying attention to any of the parts of that atom that sit outside of the cube. Instead, we are only gonna be focusing on the parts of the atom that sit inside the cube. And that corresponds to this part of the drawing right here. Or um, similar, let's get a different color. And let's focus on this atom that's in the front left, bottom corner, so that guy right there. If we wanted to think about what part of this atom is being represented in the simple cubic cell, we're only gonna be focusing on the portion of that atom that sits inside the boundary of the cube, which is this part, part right here, all of this. 
So in terms of, of what the diagram represents, this kind of gives you an idea. There's a nucleus at every single one of these corners, and there's a portion of an atom that sits at every single one of these corners. It's not a complete atom, it's just a portion of the atom. And the rest of the atom is sitting outside this boundary that we have defined as the simple cubic cell. The atoms per unit cell is referring to all of the portions of atoms that are sitting inside this boundary. So we know that for this particular simple cubic unit cell, there are eight atoms in total. We have the four peach atoms in the back, and then we have the four purple atoms in the front. There are eight atoms in total that are giving portions or have portions of their atoms inside this boundary but there is not the equivalent of eight atoms inside this boundary. Let me say that again. There is a total of eight atoms that have a piece inside this simple cubic cell. None of those atoms have a whole entire atom inside the, inside the cell. They all have just a portion. So let's, let's kind of write some of this down. There are eight nuclei in the cell, which means that there are eight portions of atoms in the cell, but no entire atom sitting inside the cell. Each nucleus has one eighth of its atom inside the cell. So it, it might be easier to visualize this one that's kind of in the back corner, or maybe this one up at the top. The atom has been cut in half, and then it has been cut in half again, and then it has been cut in half one more time. So this corner atom right here represents one eighth of the actual atom that is sitting at this particular spot in the cubic unit cell. Same thing with this atom in the back, this part right here. This corresponds to one eighth of the atom that is sitting at this particular corner. So we have eight portions of atoms in the cell. We have eight atoms with one eighth of an atom for a total of one atom, one combined atom. All together, eight atoms, each giving one eighth of their, of their volume gives us a grand sum total of the equivalent of one atom or, or ion, I'm gonna put that in parentheses, per cell. Again, there is not one single atom inside the cell, but there are eight eighths of an atom inside the cell. The last thing that we're going to be talking about is the edge length of the cube and how we can use that information to, ter to determine the radius of any one of the atoms inside this cube. The edge length is the distance on any side from one nucleus to another. I'm just gonna choose this distance right here. And in this part of chemistry, we refer to the edge length with the symbol A. So A is equal to the edge length. And because this is a perfect cube, all the edge lengths are exactly the same. What we're looking for is a relationship between the edge length of the cube, any one of these edges, and the radius of any atom or ion inside the cube. When we look at this side, we can see this edge length corresponds to, remember this is a nucleus, this is a nucleus, this is the edge of the atom. So the radius is this distance right here. The radius is also this distance right here. So the edge length corresponds to a distance of two radii for any given atom. And so that gives us a, a formula that we can use. The edge length A is equal to two times the radius of any one of the atoms. Two radii makes up one edge length for the atom. If we know the edge length of the cubic unit cell, we can use it to calculate the radius of any atom in that cell.